Welcome, Daniel. Hey, man. Thanks. So glad to have you here. Good to see you. Please, wherever you like. Over here? Yeah, sure. Great. Thanks for coming by. You know you're busy. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I pretty much live on an airplane these days, so. Yes. That's, uh, that's, so, so, so tell me, tell me about uh, Europe and how you, how you started, you know, just to, just to, people know the story, but I'd like to have it here, because you've created such immense success. How, how did it start? Um, well, you know, I, I started my first company here in Europe when I was 14, and I'm 28 now, so I'm, I'm actually becoming sort of a veteran here, but, um, you know, it, it really started, Sweden was known for piracy. Um, if you think about it, we had Kazaa, we had uh, the Pirate Bay. Um, it sort of all stemmed from Sweden. Um, and, and then Skype. And, and, and then Skype. It, it, there were positive side effects of it. But <laughs> it, it, it was really like, because there was ubiquitous broadband and everyone had it and it was super fast, uh, I think consumption, a lot of these trends that we're talking about today, video and everything else, already existed prior to the services existed. So that meant that the pirate networks were really kind of the pioneers and the innovators. And uh, it was even so bad in Sweden that at one point uh, there was an EU election um, and there was a party called the Pirate Party that got 5% of all votes in the election. And it's kind of crazy. Um, but why we started Spotify was really as a reaction to that because we felt that, hey, you know, it, it was obvious to us that the products worked. Like, people loved Kazaa, people loved Napster. But the problem was that it wasn't working for the industry. And we've been talking a bit about that today. Like, how, how do you monetize professional content? How do you make it work? Uh, we felt that the number one and the most important thing was you have to create a product that's better than piracy. And you have to start there. So we felt... And disrupting the industry is good, but you have to yeah. make it legal as well is well, important. For me, like, I, I, I almost think that disrupting the industry is kind of like overused as a term. We didn't think like, oh, we're going to disrupt the music industry or we're going to do this. We, we felt that, hey, we want this product to exist. We want it to be easier to consume music. We want it to be easier to share music with your friends. How do you build that product? And, and, and the vision really was like, what if you had iTunes, but you had all the world's music in it? Um, and how do you create that experience? And, and it was really from, from... And on any device? And on any device. Did you device. have that in mind already? Yeah. I mean, we felt that there were so many devices coming out, but it was really a shame that you were sort of locked to the Apple ecosystem of just the iPod and just the iPhone, and we wanted it to work everywhere, like water, really. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's very incredible. And uh, how did you then become so successful in the U.S. Is U.S. your first market? Um, it, 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 we, we actually launched in the U.S. in July. So the funny thing is, like, we, uh, when we started the company, we didn't know anything about what it would take to license music or, you know, um, get the rights or anything like it. We really focused on product first. Um, so we kept building it. We started in Sweden. We rolled it out in Europe. And um, uh, it actually took us two more years before we could enter the U.S. Um, but so tell me about that fight. I mean, it's been, it, it took you two years, right? To, right. To get that. But that's very interesting, I think, because everybody kind of failed in the U.S. And, and, and you, coming from Europe, cracked the U.S. market. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been a pretty wild ride. I mean, since Facebook, we've added um, the F8 launch, we added uh, 7 million users. 7 uh, million new users? Yes. From Facebook? Yeah. So it's pretty remarkable in, in a very short time frame. Um, I guess uh, being friends with Zook is important. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely helps. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. Um, but I, I, I think more so, we, we just kept cranking on the product. And we, real, we realized that 
um, every person that used Spotify loved the product and they were inviting their friends. And if, if you have a product that's really contagious, that people want to talk about, that people want to like, share with their friends, like most people in the beginning told us, like, oh, you've got a client, no one wants to download a client, no one wants to do that. I don't think it matters. I think what matters is like, you have a great user experience, you put the user in the focus, and you solve a problem. Like the most important thing that I think entrepreneurs forget about is what is the problem you're solving? In our case, is how can you make all the world's music accessible in less than half a second? That's really uh, that case. And, and social too, like I can go and listen to your music from Facebook. Like the yeah. Facebook experience completely changed my music experience, which is uh, pretty lame, I have to admit. Like <laughs> my knowledge is near zero. Yeah, but then it, I can go and see what Daniel is listening or what Zuckerberg is listening. Right. I, I know he likes the French Daft Punk, for example. We, we both do, that, that's one thing. Um, and, and yeah, you kind of need to upgrade your music taste a bit, but uh, that's a later <laughs> yeah, question. Yeah, I'll, I'll take all your advice. Yeah, it's good, good. So uh, how do you crack just this one? Like how everybody fails in the US to convince the majors and, and walk their way in, and you arrive and you make it work. How do you do that? Um, well, first and foremost, it wasn't easy, and it took us more than two years to do it. But I think a lot of it really had to do with we consistently set targets for ourselves um, together with the record labels and, and others. And we just kept proving that this model does work. Like people start using our product, they keep engaging to build a library. And when they do, they feel comfortable paying for it. And a lot of people ask us, so what are you paying for? Well, the first thing, you're paying for portability. And it, it's, it's a simple notion because if you Ask yourself, how many people do you know that bought something off iTunes for the sole purpose of listening in front of your computer? You'll find that it's really not that many. Um, but actually, people buy music because they want to take it with them in their cars or on their iPod when they're going out exercising or whatever they're doing. Um, so we just, you know, again, we focused on that as being the pain point. But a lot of our users, when we ask them, why are you paying? It's like, well, I love the product. It's really that simple. Yeah, product is great. How about Apple? Because like, you can, I mean, you can totally just remove iTunes from your Mac and run Spotify, and it's awesome, and you've got everything, it, and more, because it's free, right? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, you can definitely do that. What we find, though, is like people continue to use iTunes. Um, they change their music discovery, though, through Spotify. And over time, as they build their library, they kind of move from the ownership-centric model that is Apple today to the access model of you know having everything available. Um, and I think once conceptually you kind of get that into your habits, and especially like when you get the sharing flowing. Um, uh, it, it really changes how people discover music, yeah. how people share. So. Any Spotify user in the room? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, it, it's... You have a few room. friends here, apparently. Yeah, it seems, it seems like that. Uh, so hopefully you guys have better music taste than we care, but... What? Daft Punk is awesome. You don't it, like Daft Punk? Uh, Daft Punk is truly awesome. Okay. It's one of my favorite bands, so... That's the only one I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell me, <laughs> Daniel, you have, you have some news, I think, uh, I think today. Yeah, so... Um, so, 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 so today, Spotify is really, like, you, you, you install it, you get the music, you, you play it. Yep. Um, so, um, you, you have, we, we have an application that you download to your PC. We have, um, you know, um, a, 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 a Sabine, mobile can app. can we put my, uh, my iPhone on? here if it works. We yeah. got mobile apps for um, pretty much every um, platform here. Let's see. This uh, is a friend of mine who's done this, uh, this playlist. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, hardcore. I don't yeah, know that's great. That's great. That's awesome. Anyway, thank you. Uh, so that's the Spotify experience. I run with this, so. Yeah, uh, that sounds like Parker's playlist, by the way. <laughs> uh, he usually listens to Skrillex, so. Um, yeah, so, so basically, last week, we announced um, an application platform. Um, basically, the opportunity for every developer now to start building music apps 
on top of Spotify and obviously have all the world's music accessible and, and making it easy. So we have concert uh, uh, apps like Songkick, we had Rolling Stone magazine, we had TuneWiki so you can lo look at lyrics. Um, how, how does this work? Because you have a lot of developers here, entrepreneurs, right. developers. Uh, how, is, how is that Spotify becoming a platform? Explain. Can I just get, you get, I get an SDK, I can build on Yeah, it? Uh, so uh, you can you go onto our website and um, there's a developer API there and you can download the SDK and you can start building HTML5 apps. Um, through a, a very easy to use JavaScript uh, a APIs basically and hook into the Spotify experience. Um, and the really, really cool thing about it is we've seen like a lot of uses already of it. We've seen uh, TuneWiki creating lyrics so that you can ask you're playing the music. Even if you're fast forward, you s jump to the ex exact words that they're uh, singing um, so you can sing along like I usually do. Um, and uh, or, or, or a song kick will look at all the stuff in your library um, and create um, a, a calendar of concerts you might want to go to. So there, there's really all sorts of experiences, but our New York team, um, engineering team, they looked at our platform um, two, three months ago and they were like, oh, well, we want to build an app. We've, we've always lacked radio. So they started building that and um, I started, um, um, you know, uh, I started playing around with the product and I realized, holy shit, this is awesome. Um, so what we're really announcing today is that we've built um, a radio app on top of our platform. A radio app? Yeah. So you have Spotify radio now? Yeah, Spotify radio on, um, on, on Spotify. It's kind of like Pandora, but it's with unlimited skipping and unlimited stations. You can just keep going in there. and. Uh, it, it's been, you know, as we played around with it, it's, uh, I've, I've discovered so much new music um, just through this app um, in, in like the last couple of weeks that it's been insane. So we, we, we think people will love playing around with it. Um, we love to see what developers will do as well on top of that. Why is that big news for you, which, which you just released now? Right. A, a radio streaming, making Spotify streaming and making it a radio. Why is that so important? Well, what we discovered really is that there's a lean back experience and a lean forward. And I think, you know, one of the points that I made um, with our announcement last week was that music for us is just really about covering all these use cases and making it personal to you. Um, and Spotify historically hasn't been very good at curating music and, and kind of making it personal. But through all of these app partnerships, we've done that. And, and now it just turned out that actually, you know, hey, uh, we can build apps ourselves really on top of our platform. And it's really fast for us to develop. Um, but it was a big use case that a lot of people were asking us for. And uh, today we've uh, covered that use case. And I think, you know, uh, what I love about the experience really is that you can skip as, as many tracks as you want and really kind of. You can do that here, right? You, I can skip as well? Yeah, sure. But it, it's not a radio station. So if you think about it for a US user, they have Pandora today. Um, and Pandora obviously limits the amount of skips you can do. Oh. So, um, all so the, the big deal is that it's unlimited skips? And unlimited stations, and at least if you're... Um, oh, so Pandora has limited skips, limited stations. I see. Exactly. So it was a big thing for us. Our users was like, hey, you know, I want to easily add the things from the radio into my music library. And, um, you know, we managed to do that. And it was a seamless experience now so that you can really um, use the radio app in Spotify and just, like, do the lean back experience, but at the same time, save it as a playlist or skip the song or, or add it to my library. So it, it, it really was a big use case that we now covered. And is that something you did to differentiate yourself to compete? Because you very differentiated already, but tell me about your competition. You're quoting Pandora. What else matters for you? Is um, that US, are you US centric? Um, I wouldn't say that we're US-centric at all. Um, and, and I wouldn't even say that Pandora is a competitor. We look at ourselves that we want to be a music platform and we want to make it easy for people to um, consume 
and really enjoy as much music as possible and share it with their friends. So I, I, we, we, we don't really look at it like that, but obviously the US is an important market to us, but um, even more so, I think you know, one of the things and one of the things that we talked about coming here is like, I think that there's so much cool innovation going on in Europe. I was really surprised uh, coming back to Sweden um, earlier this year um, and, and there's some fantastic companies there. There's um, you know, up and coming companies like Tripbirds and others. Um, but there's also Mojang that does Minecraft. There's Klarna that uh, does payments. There's all these companies now that are coming around that they're getting more and more mature. Um, and I was honestly feeling very inspired and feeling the buzz and the vibe in the Stockholm community and traveling around Europe, I feel the same pretty much in every city. Well, we got 300 startups candidates last year, 600 this year at Lowe, mostly from Europe. So yeah, yeah that, that proves it. How, why do you think is that? Because I, you, you're saying you're inspired, I think you're inspiring them. Because well, you're building a worldwide success from, 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 from Europe, from Sweden. So. Sure, I, but I think all these successes feeds each other, much like if you think about, like one of, I'm, I'm sure you've read Jobs. Uh, um, yes, you I know. did. Yes. Who's read Steve Jobs' bio? Okay, there's still a good portion that I haven't. Um, it's well, long. Yeah, it's, it's really long. Um, but one of the sections that I liked probably the most is in the end when he, you know, advises Larry Page of Google. And, you know, a lot of people, given that he was claiming to be kind of upset with Google, um, wonder why he did that. But he was like, no, that's the valley ethos. You know, we inspire and help each other. So I think that the successes that Europe are having, like Spotify and others, um, are truly kind of, you know, we want to pay it forward. And I think we as Europe need to create more of a pay it forward culture because we're, we're spread out in all these cities. Um, but on that point, Daniel, Eric Schmidt on this stage uh, on our first day said Silicon Valley needs a competitor. Europe needs to build a competitor of Silicon Valley. How do you see that? Because you're, there are clusters. We're talking this morning with representatives from the government, from French and, and right. in UK. And we have clusters. Do you see it happening in one place? Do you see it happening in all over Europe? How do you um, see that? Honestly, I don't think that there's one cluster in, in, um, in Europe. I mean, I see great innovation in Stockholm, but I see it in Helsinki too with Rovio and others. Uh, I see it in Berlin with yeah. SoundCloud and others. I see it here yeah. in Paris. Um, I, I, I see it in London. So th there, there's a diversity, but this is why I think events like this matter so much. Because we have the opportunity, this is when we can get together. And this is why we should really create a pay it forward kind of culture uh, throughout Europe where we help each other, much like uh, the Valley historically has. Explain paid forward culture. Well, for me, it's, it's mostly about like, I. I I don't spend a, I try to run a company and try to do the best I can at that, but... You're, you're doing well. Uh, thanks. Uh, but, you know, I'll, I try to meet entrepreneurs as much as I can. I don't do investments. I really don't do anything other than focus on Spotify. But if anyone wants advice from me, I try to give it as often as I can. Let's get it right now. Sure. What's your top three advice for entrepreneurs in the room, starting from Europe? to yeah. create a world leader well, so or to succeed in the US? So first, I don't, I don't think about geographies. I know everything is different in every country, but I think there's some simple points you can make, which is, for me, the idea is 5% and the execution is 95. It doesn't matter. The right person can sell umbrellas in Sahara and they'll figure out a way that like it's sun protecting or you know it's it's uh, great because it generates electricity. They'll they'll iterate on that idea and they'll improve on it. Um, so I really believe that like execution is everything. And 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 yeah, your apps are extremely polished. We had Kiran just before you who was explaining that uh, no one should be mediocre and. And yeah. Really matters the most. So. Yeah. It, 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 and it so you're not in the like uh, Reid Hoffman quote, the founder of LinkedIn, who said, uh, if you ship your, if you're not ashamed of your product, when you ship it, you shipped too late. Yeah. You want the opposite. You want more polishing. Well, I think we're we as a company, um, we have really never kind of subscribed to the sort of put it out there and see what happens. 
Um, I think for certain things you can do that, and I think it probably makes sense for most things. But you know, it, it, it's like the the Henry Ford quote: like if if people would have asked me what to build, it would have said a faster horse. Instead, he went on and built a car. Sometimes you got to do things that are unexpected that takes it to the next level. And you know what I try to focus my team on now is we we have the luxury of. Um, having dedicated teams that can work on things because we've grown to the size now where we can do things, which means that certain projects we do, like the app platform, that's, that's like something we've been working on for over a year. Um, but we can still kind of execute with the rest of our business. And ultimately, I, I just think, you know, coming in from the 95% execution, the next thing is really about People is everything, and I know this is like a cliche, and everyone no, says no, 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 no. I agree. It's the team you bring together. Do yeah. you do that? Are you one of those founders who, are, who thinks it's more like a one-man show uh, to start with when you're a startup, or is it more like no, no, no? You need you need one great engineer. You need maybe a designer. You need uh, a, a more someone who is marketing, sales, yeah. So or CEO, you know, but not technical. Yeah, I mean. It, it definitely helps if, if, if you want to build like a really, um, you know, a strong uh, product. I think it really helps if you know the technology. You, You're coding yourself? Um, I'm not coding it myself. Uh, my team uh, would be, you know, very sad if I did because I would probably break most things for them. Um, but I used to do that. Um, and I used to be like hobby designer of things. I used to be a jack of all trades. And I would just encourage you as entrepreneurs just to try everything. Like learn um, and be, be, you know, the biggest thing, people often ask me, so what do you do? And, you know, what do you like doing? And for me, I, you know, I, I come into work every day. I get to meet really smart people. I and my coworkers. I get to have a lot of fun and I get to learn. It's really, really simple. Um, so for me, you know, it really comes down to you're going to spend all this time with, with the people. So choose them carefully. And the most important part is like the early days, the, the team you pick, because it will create winners. But it's, it's your job, if you're a founder, and I think this is the point that most people get, is not to do everything. Yeah. But your so pick one. But so first, uh, you, you're, you're saying execution. Yeah. Second, people. Yeah. And the third one is focus. Yes. And, and, and it took me a long time. I will actually say that it took me probably until six months ago until I really understood. Oh, yeah. He was a terrible failure before <laughs> that. Right? Well, you know, I, I, think, I think I was doing all right. But I, I look at myself and I, I, just, I just think that the most important thing that I can do, and this is the one piece of advice, if you're an entrepreneur, like the advice I'll give you is think of yourself as an editor. A lot of people don't do that, but your job is really to distill every single point to the, to the, the, the smallest piece um, that makes it sense, that makes sense um, for your team and for the outside world. Um, which is why, you know, if I, if I look at what I do now, I, I focus most of my time in really narrating and making it simple and understandable for people what we do. So like curating, you mean everything happening in the, in the company, yeah. you're like a, like, a, like a maestro. Well, yeah, or, or an editor. I actually yeah. like the editor yeah, yeah, analogy yeah. better because it, it's, it's really about setting the context and choosing what not to do more than what you do. Can we talk about um, revenues a little bit? You have, you have, uh, do you, I think you're, you're, you're communicating in public on how many paid users you have? Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, we, we have over two and a half million paying customers, which is great. Um, pay how much? Um, most of them, the vast majority of them, pay us 10 euros a month. Two and a half million paid users by 10 a month? Yeah. That's a pretty neat business. It's a pretty neat business, yeah. Um, and, 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 and the interesting part, it just keeps growing um, because like every user we bring on, what we know is the more they engage with Spotify, the more likely they are to pay. Um, but because we... Well, that's like Evernote. Uh, Phil was explaining that. The yeah. more they are in, of course, because you get all my music and... Yeah, I, I think actually Evernote um, is probably one of the most similar companies yeah. to us because it's a true freemium model. And 
cloud-based with all the apps on all the platforms. Yeah, very, um, very similar. Yeah, we're, we're, we think what Evernote's doing is great. So, um, and we're big users of the product too. So, yeah, I mean, they, and, and the interesting thing about Evernote too is like the reason why you pay for the product is because you really like the product. Yep. And in most cases, um, people ask us, like, what's the secret sauce? And we could point to 25 different reasons why people pay. But the most important one is just the very simple one that it's all about the product. And if users love your product, they will recommend it to friends. People ask me about, oh, what virality tricks did you do? And you know, all of that. Yeah, you have no tricks, right? No, well, I Facebook helps virality a little bit. No, face, Facebook is one of, uh, is probably... Seven million users, you said. Right now, Facebook is the greatest distribution platform on Earth. It, it's, it, it, that's really the case. But with that said, ultimately, what Facebook optimizes for is people wanting to share things. And, and they won't share it unless it's something that's beautiful, simple, and that just works. And that's really what um, Spotify aspires to be. Daniel, tell me, when Facebook helps you get 7 million new users, uh, how, what happens? And, and you're saying, I've got 2.5 million registered paid users. What happens? Like, uh, is Mark telling you, hey, uh, can I have a cut of that? What's the deal? <laughs> no, uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, uh, Mark, um, he, he really looks at this as a way of creating more engagement around content. And, and I think he looks much broader at you know, what um, uh, Facebook today, he's, he's just trying to encourage more sharing. Like if you, if you listen to uh, what he speaks about, I, I would say that he realized that the value of Facebook is really the interactions between people. Mm. Um, and obviously music is a very, very big part. And, I think both him and I believe that music is probably the most social object there is. Um, so to kind of put that on Facebook and, and making all that sharing possible um, uh, would be a big thing. And, and it turned out that that was. But do you share case. some revenue too? No, um, he, he, he has his business and I have yeah, my no. business and uh, we happen to be on the Facebook platform and we're very happy with that partnership. Okay. No, well, it looks pretty successful. Um, it's um, it, it's 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 extremely uh, impressive what you uh, what, what you have built. So, what's what's coming next? Uh, you're going IPO in a few months? Um, no IPO in sight. Uh, definitely not. I mean, again, we're, we're you know we just focus on uh, a few years. I said something, and uh, you know a lot of people were questioning that, but I still mean it, which is we just want to build a truly great company. Um, and we believe that it starts with the product and then you know, it's all about the people in the company and the culture you set. Um, and we just still want to keep doing that um, and everything else is secondary. We don't, this is not, the objective of this company is not to sell the company. I was lucky to get money before I started Spotify, uh, enough to know that it really didn't make any difference in my life at all. Um, on the contrary, actually, I became very unhappy. And uh, I, I realized that the thing that we're passionate about is truly just, even if it's in a really small way, changing the world and, and getting people, in our case, to listen to more music and share it with their friends. How do you get Sean Parker as an investor? Um, well, you call I, him? Hi, Sean. No, actually, like, I think it's well publicized now. He wrote me this really long email, um, and it took me like two days to even respond to it because it was so lengthy that I felt that I, I had to like, craft an equally um, you know, uh, well-responded uh, note back. And I don't write long emails normally, so uh, it took me probably two days to write that. Um, so. He discovered the product, he really liked it, and he uh, sent me this really long email about why he felt that this could be it, but also all of the faults. And he had quite a long, long list of things that he didn't like. Um, so we just kept that dialogue back and forth, but I think uh, Sean and I really look at the world in a similar way, which is it, it's truly all about, in this case in music, that the, the world has moved from an ownership model to being about an access model, and you have to make it easier for people to 
enjoy music and share it. And when you do that, everything else falls into place. You're going to be around at the web today. What, what's the best way to interact with you? Twitter, um, Facebook? Yeah, t Twitter is like a really good way. At um, Daniel Eck? Um, yeah, Daniel Eck, um, or my Twitter handle, and this is going to be hard because it's a Swedish word, is E-L-D-S-J-A-L. Um, and it, it means, um, it's eldskäl in Swedish, and what it means is like when someone's like truly passionate, burning for something. Um, and, um, you know, that's what we do. Daniel, you're the icon of the new Europe of technology. This is incredible. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks, Thank you.